What's up guys? This is gonna be part two of our Yankee cap trip. Um, we're gonna get into the deeper water species, the groupers, the tile fish, and we're gonna turn the music down and we're gonna turn the technical aspect of this up. We're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of what it takes to go out to Pulley Ridge, drop down, and be successful with slow pitch jigging. Also, we're gonna do a giveaway. You guys have been awesome thank you so much for all of your support we really feel the love pouring in through our social media um, as well as you guys coming in the store we want to give away something to you so we're giving away a 12 jig adventure pack it comes with the terminal tackle and the 12 jigs a bag um, and all you have to do is comment down below like and subscribe we're going to pick a winner in the randomizer and then we'll reach out to you guys uh, via private message and ship it out to you. Um, there's no catch. All you gotta do is like, subscribe, and, and comment down below. couple fun things that we were doing we were playing around with the shark band zeppelin um, that I we were able to effectively deploy uh, that zeppelin uh, onto my line as I was tight with a, a fish that was tugging me on the bottom good had no idea what it was at that point didn't see a whole lot of shark activity at this point starting the day in a, in a new spot but I, we were able to, uh, Pete helped me out, and Pete, we had a, the Zeppelin on a quick clip, and I was tight to the fish, and I just brought my rod close to the rail, holding tension on the fish. Pete was able to put the quick clip onto my line and send it down, and that Zeppelin made it all the way down uh, to that fish. Get it around and get your fingers off my line. Yeah, good man, man, good man. This is where. Ready? Yep. Deploy. Deploying. All right. Oh, we just... oh well. Moment of truth. <laughs> now shark me. <laughs> we just put this up. Yeah, tell the camera what's going on. Well, I just had a big hook up on the bottom. Actually, he came unglued. I redropped and he came back, which is indicative of a grouper. And, uh,. Petey over here grabbed the Zeppelin, which we had ready to rig, and we were able to clip it on my braid, and it's descending right now. Any moment now, it's connecting with the jig. Hopefully, it doesn't foul the hook set at all. Who knows? But we got a Zeppelin deployed. We have a large shark in the area that's been messing around right here around the pulpit, and this fish is tight. And we got a Zeppelin hanging below at about three feet. So. Oh, red. Nice. Big red. Yep, fire truck. And, wow, man. Too bad we can't keep him. Yeah, let's get a little, uh, as quick as we can to film this. Oh, look what he ate. Oh, there goes all the air Look what he ate. <laughs> yep, the new flat back. That's right, yeah. Rainbow Mac. Suck, so, I just hold this up real quick. Be close to back. So, oh wow, great. We love that type of hook set. Flat back Rainbow Mac. Hook in either side of the mouth. Here's the Zeppelin that we deployed down the line. There's a huge shark active in this area. We see them every couple seconds. And this fish was not touched. And as I brought the fish up to the surface, it was a big fat red grouper, which was uh, a wonderful fish to catch. It was beautiful. I liked holding, holding him up. Um, one of them was on the new flat back rainbow Mac. Uh, so that was really cool. I selected that jig because there's some silvers and some pinks. There's some dark green along the back. Um, I, I really just wanted to see what it was like putting that color profile down. I know the flat back is a performing jig. So I had all the confidence in the mold and I was interested to see uh, that that color pattern perform and I was happy with the result of a big fat fire truck red grouper. Uh, similarly, the other fire truck red 
red grouper I got that morning was on our 250 gram flatty. And that is a new mold that we did upsizing the flatty to 250 grams and uh, i was really really pleased uh, to be in you know 250 feet of water using a 250 gram uh, flatty that was getting to the bottom felt really good i was still getting great flutter that the 200 grams uh, uh gave uh, gave me action wise and you know produced another nice uh, fire truck red grouper Dang. I think he may have gotten have bigger. How was the grab on that, Chris? Good, 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 good. That's got like some mud digs on it, baby. Black grouper digs. What jig are you using? 250 gram orange flatty. Been loving it, actually. work right now boys I'm at work got a nice little stern drift gain in line good digs need this fish even if it's a it's big fat red it's okay take a picture I was right there with you right next to you We're about 220 feet, right Chris? 220, yep. Yeah. 250 gram flatty's choice right now if you want to use a flatty. You've been working the back in a rotation? Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Four or five man rotations working. We're all getting, you know, you get a little clip of bottom time across the stern. Got to respect Brown over there in the corner. Pull it up when we get near him. Here we go, we got color. It's big. It's it's a big group That's a fire truck, Chris. That's a pretty fit. That's about as big as they get. I think that's a, a red snowy. Yeah. Man, that's about as big as they get, Chris. which I wasn't able to get a Zeppelin down on that one, but we did use a sequelizer with a big four or five pound uh, weight, and, and we were able to hook the sequelizer onto any and all red grouper that were caught and send that back down. And that sequelizer was cool because I think it, it released around 150 uh, feet and likely gave those red grouper an excellent chance of, of going back down to the bottom safely and healthily. No puncture wounds um, by venting tools you know, in their side. Uh, hang out until we go see them next year, basically. Clipping it on the bottom lip. Is that on the bottom? Is it, does it have to lock? Yeah. Is that locked? I think so. Alright. I'd say that's locked. Yeah. Ready? Yep. There you go. There you go. Good luck, buddy. When do I hey. stop? Hit that subscribe uh, yeah, button for me. Good work, Chris. You're doing the right thing. Doing my part. You want me to reel it up? I started out the morning, I was fishing up on the pulpit, and I realized that Jose is behind me and he keeps, you know, hooking up. He's, you know, fish on, fish on. And as much as I love to uh, cheer my buddies on and I want them to catch fish, there's nobody that roots for me more than me. So I wanna catch fish as well. And so, and this is, this is a real good nugget that you guys should really um, listen to. Pay attention to the anglers around you when you're fishing, whether you're on your private boat or you're um, out on a head boat um, like we are in this video. Watch what they're doing because a lot of times, you know, the biggest Guggen on the boat could be slaying it because he's doing something different than you. And speaking of Guggens, just kidding, my buddy Jose behind me um, was just doing very short pitches, you know, so. 
So you could do a long fall where you're really lifting the rod very high and you're getting a long movement on the jig. You're getting a very long fall on the jig. You could do medium, you know, to where you're only going up about halfway, or you could do, you know, a, a short pitch or a short fall with the jig. And I'm watching Jose and very effortlessly, he's just kind of lifting off the bottom very subtle and and staying in that target zone tight to the bottom so um, this tells me that the fish are probably not actively eating they're not being very aggressive um, but they will eat it if it's in their face and it's an easy um, um, meal for them so what did I do is I just switch it up. I was doing a very long fall and I started doing just a very short pitch, little quarter turns, small turns, dropping down, staying tight to the bottom. And that's when, you know, Jose and I, we, we fired off together. Tell me how you feel about it. I dropped down a 500 gram jig to the bottom. I got my electric reel and uh, nice, nice thump down there. This guy definitely feels a little bit heavier than my last fish. But I'm very happy to be hooked up. Um, a lot of guys will ask me uh, jig color, and you could refer back to the video that uh, Chris Doyle made on jig selection. And when it comes to colors, for me, um, I really enjoy using the golds and reds when I'm fishing for grouper. I will put on pinks and chartreuse whenever I'm fishing for snapper. Um, in low light conditions, I like to use something with a little bit sharper color like the pinks and the chartreuses as well. I'm always looking for a jig that has a holographic uh, foil on it so it's getting reflection from the sun and it's blinging down there and it's making a loud uh, noise per se. You know it's, it's flashy um, when it's down on the bottom. When it comes to sizes, you're gonna switch it up uh, quite often. There has been times where I've gotten away with 250 grams and 800 feet of water out in Pulley Ridge, and there's been times to where I could barely stick bottom with a 500 gram jig. I would suggest having multiple jigs in sizes all the way from 250 up to the 500, possibly a few 600s in there as well. It's right, so the day, we're on day two, and uh, yesterday the wind was just going too much for the captain to get us out deep. But uh, today, uh, very slow drift. We're about one knot drift, and we were able to really stay vertical with the five or 400 gram jigs. And uh, I did about, I'd say 10, maybe 10 taps on the bottom before this guy hit. And uh, I've got about 26 meters left to go up. We'll see what he looks like. He's bouncing on me, doing a lot of bouncing. That's a yellow edge, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yellow edge, that's what I'm talking about. Woohoo! Nice. Look at that, guys. Drop him on the deck. Look gap for the win. Oh man. Oh, what a treat, man. What a treat. I told you. Did I see that yellow? Look at that guys, what an abs yellow edge. You guys, I don't know if you guys could tell why they call them a yellow edge, but it's pretty cool. We got the sunlight going right through the yellow on the edge. These guys here are super sharp. And delicious. Uh, and delicious. And a lot of you ask me how come their eyeballs are popping out. It's because of the pressure from whenever you uh, bring them up, just like a diver with deco, you know, these guys also will Fill up. Together, we were going fish for fish um, up there on the pulpit, um, whether it was uh, amberjack, blue line tile, uh, snowy grouper, and um, you know, that my observation of what he was doing to hook up helped me to start getting tight and going fish for fish with him. And, and I can tell you that, you know, I do it all the time all the time. I'm always watching everybody and what they're doing um, to, to increase my chances of hooking up. Um, and that's whenever I hooked into this uh, uh, beautiful fish. Uh, it's quite a, quite a haul to get them up. And you always wonder if the hook is gonna come out on the way up. So with these electrics, you really 
keep it slow, finesse it, feel for any like vibrations or something like that because then you want to back off of it a bit. But uh, this deep drop has been pretty fruitful for a lot of us. So when it vibrates, you got to back off? <laughs> when you start getting that vibration, you slow it down. Good vibes, bringing only good vibes. It's been an excellent trip. I'm probably at about half power on the reel. And this reel uh, is the older Seaborg um, 300 MJ. There's a new one that's just a J, it's a black one um, that does not have the second gear. So this has a high and low gear. The regular jigging one doesn't have the high and low gear and I'm fishing. Uh, the Witch Doctor Pandemic uh, slow pitch deep drop rod that Adam built for me before I came out here and I've been switching it up from uh, Jigstar and Pro Jiggers and this guy here but you'll see I'm at it says eight seven six five as soon as it gets to five it stops it's a jack yeah jack no, build big blue, let go. Oh my god, I look at that, that bro. Holy mackerel, dude. That's my personal best blue line tile. Yeah. Watch that camera. Holy smokes. Woo, I'm dope. Nice. Look at the size of that blue line, guys. Oh, my goodness oh, yeah. gracious. Good, Johnny. I can just grab it, man. Look at the size of that blue line. That is a beast. That's my personal best right there. Undoubtedly. And he's barely hooked, man. Barely hooked. That's why you just take it easy. Finesse. So here's some technical stuff for you guys. So when the boat stops, Generally, the captain is is you know setting up a drift that will will line up to put us over, if not one in particular spot, multiple spots throughout a drift. So whenever he stops, a lot of times, I always say that first jig down will generally get the fish, but there could be some complications in that because if the boat hasn't settled into its drift and you pitch your jig out there the wrong way, then there's the chance that you're gonna wind up with your jig either under the boat or going down the side of the boat, which is not what you want. You want it to get vertical as much as possible. A lot of guys will wait to see the first guy that drops his jig down to see which way it's going and then pitch their jig out afterwards knowing that they could pitch it you know uh, away from the drift or into the drift so that it ends up vertical straight up and down from them there's a lot of things that you can do to combat the jig scoping out quickly from you and you know it's not always that you need your line to be 15 pound test super thin diameter in deep drop situations but if you have it ready to go it could always help you so we'll put on heavier jigs thinner jigs thinner line um, we're going I'm generally doing 50 pound test fluorocarbon about 12 feet and then I'm going to uh, either 15 or 20 pound uh, uh, Daiwa J braid is what I like to use uh, on all of my reels and the reason why I'm not going the traditional 30 pound test which is what I do use up on top is because I'm looking to cut current and I'm looking to stay as vertical as I can possibly and everything changes out there it's never exactly the same there has been many times to where you can pitch out your jig there on the pulpit or on the stern wherever you're at and as soon as it hits the water boom you get that strike and this particular trip what was going on was we were doing a long soak and then getting a strike keeping that jig in the strike position as much as possible for as long as possible to try and get a strike and by thinning down my line increasing the weight of my jig uh, decreasing the profile of my jig i was able to stay vertical and in that strike position yeah. 
John, I am fishing a 900 gram jig and I'm hooked up to a whopper. Look at Adam behind you. Look at Adam. The 900 nice gram line. That's, a, that's a torpedo. I like that gram. color for the deep. It just seems like, like the right jig for the job out here in the deep is the torpedo works and gets down. It crushes a lot of fish. And check it out, Adam's hooked up right behind us on a 900 gram jig. 900 gram depth charge. And it's a pig. I'm making, I'm thinking a guess. Blue line. You think it's a blue line? Blue line. All right. Final yeah. answer? Uh, no. Wait, 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 no. Not a snow. Huh? All right, Lane. No. Big AJ. Big it's AJ. Not, definitely not an AJ. Okay, no, he already said that. All right. What is it, Adam? The way this guy's digging, it's a big tail. I'm going to say grouper. Grouper? Okay. He's still 117 meters down. Okay. And when he hit it, he went straight down and peeled off about 30 meters of line. And you see, he's still stopping it. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's still got some legs. Yeah. Is it a jack? That's the question. All right. But it hasn't moved right or left. This thing's just come straight up and wants to dig down. 25. 22. There you go. 20. Place your bets right now. Screen go dark. Blue line. Screen go black. Everyone. You know, I filmed this whole thing. I'm standing next to him. We're chatting. We're talking about gear. We're talking about tackle. And you know, and it's everybody's guessing on what is this fish? What is this fish? And I know for me, whenever I'm watching videos on YouTube, that I want to see, I want to see the fish pop up. I want to see the fish get gaffed. I want to see the fish come over the rail. So ironically, um, as the fish is coming up, we're doing the countdown, you know, and Adam yells out, scream, go black. So we could all guess, you know, what, what fish it is. And, and here goes your black screen because boom. The camera battery died and I thought it was still going and we got the fish over the rail, but check out my buddy Adam's uh, beautiful uh, yellow edge grouper. Yeah, that's a nice. Oh, face this way, face this way. Here we go. Yeah, nice, like... pretty. One of the big takeaways that, that, that we want you to have from, from this particular video is to when you're going out there slow pitch jigging, um, while you're slow pitch jigging, to think to yourself, you know, what can I do to maximize amount the amount of time that my jig is in the strike zone and this is effectively for bottom species too so how do i maximize my bait my jig being in the strike zone you know so as we experienced conditions slightly vacillating back and forth throughout the day you know what goes through our our, our heads are more streamlined jigs heavier jigs possibly picking up a setup that has a has a lighter line spooled on it um, and just the vital importance of of getting your jig the opposite way of the current when you're first deploying your jig into the water. Um, that buys you some critical time for your jig to get down to depth as it's catching up with the drift and coming underneath you. Um, that there and there's other factors, you know, that come that come into play as well. But that's really one thing that circulates our, our in our minds while we're fishing, you know knowing effectively what we need to do to catch a fish is how do we keep our jig in the strike zone for as long as possible. And that's something that we really want our viewers and and when, when you call here or you speak to us in person, uh, often our conversation surrounds you know that concept. And there are a lot of variables that, that go into that which makes the conversation potentially uh, lengthy and, and technical. And we always wanna remind people to keep it simple also uh, and and get your jig in the water and catch some fish but as you're dialing in slow pitch jigging uh, the variables that you have in your control to maximize your jig in the strike zone is a key element to really being successful and effective and catching more fish hey Adam how do you feel about your odds on this not very good 
We're gonna need you to put that back in your ice box. Thank you. Kickstar, Floater. You hold on to it for the slimy. Adam, how do you feel about your win today? It was very, very nice. I am going to exchange that at Johnny Jake's for two new 300 gram torpedoes. <laughs> Given this is a $400 rod, you don't understand how expensive those torpedoes are. Did you have any doubts work. in your mind that you were going to win? Oh, God, no. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the snapper? That's what I want to know. Who's got the snapper? Up first, we got Big Brown. Yes, sir. The mutton man. He was, south, what baby. did you crush these fish on? Johnny G and Goggle Eye. Oh, man. Oh, and up next know. we have Christopher Snow Corona, Jay. light show, Snow weighing Jay. in. Chris, we're gonna need you to throw that back in your ice box, quietly. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thanks for playing. playing. I Who else wants to compete? Anybody got a mind for the yeah, snapper? Oh, oh, Adam, back on the playing field. Let's see what he's got. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, check that fish's belly for weight. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we got a oh, 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 how do you feel about your odds right now, William? Uh, not looking too good. Not looking too good. You're looking pretty good. Yeah. Not looking too good. He's the big one. And he picked the little one too. Oh, you went with the small one first. Oh! Yeah! William N G for the win. You don't even have to win that one. This is the scale. I got one more. Oh! Love it. Guys, it's going head to head right now. We've got William and G versus Big Brown. Jigs versus Bait on the scale. Oh! Wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Oh, I don't know, man. Oh, man. Oh, that's all right. We'll break it in half. That's the big one. Oh, here we go. See, he was William NG is bringing in his backup snap. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. Yeah. There it is. See? Oh, Brown's got that one a little bit, but the other one was basically a tie. I don't know, it looks like he's leaning to his defense. That's Brown. But this, let's see, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, the suspense is killing me again. <laughs> oh, little B. What's up, man? Oh, yeah. Brown. 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 I had a good time on the boat with Johnny Jig and the boys. Hope to see them again. Now you got a, Now you have a deep drop and slow pitch rod. Now you can jig. Yes, I can. Yeah. Now I can get the real deal now. You, you can Learn can how. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Appreciate y'all. Welcome, man. All, All right. right. <laughs> He's got three. <laughs> for the pool money. Oh, tuna cows. I was like, you're ready to come. Tuna cows. Bring those tuna. Corona. Oh, shit. Oh. I know there's niggas. Oh. I got another tuna. So far, Adam Treisman is in the lead with a beautiful snowy grouper. No, yellow edge grouper. Yellow edge. Close. Go ahead. Here we go. Alex from Pesca Mara is coming up with a fish that. How about we do the largest after him? Uh, <laughs> we're gonna. I don't think this footage is gonna make the film, Alex. <laughs> oh. Christopher Corota, light show, chiming in. I see him with a number of six on that bad boy. Tuna. Oh! Close, but no cigar. Here we go. Once again, William William and G. How would you do the bit from half? You gotta lift the fish up, bro. Oh! Oh! Very close, very close. But this one hanging down lower than that one means yeah, that this one is heavier. Anybody else? Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Right, we have a winner! Adam Trent! 
Yeah! Like, what are you gonna do with all this money? Well, I gotta thank God and thank my family. <laughs> And I gotta say, it was a really, really tough day out there, but if it wasn't for this guy here, we never would have had this wonderful trip. <laughs> so thank you, Johnny Jigs. <laughs> Go America! <laughs> I'm going to and that's Disney it, World. folks, for the weigh-in. <laughs> <laughs>